Mark's mind was flooded with memories of that encounter in the hotel room in London, the moment when he was so close to catching the man Serena had been seeing before she intervened and shielded his face. Regret washed over him like a wave. His heart raced as he asked Gwen, Do you know who that man is? Recalling Linda's instructions from the previous day, Gwen replied, He appears to be her classmate. I don't know the full details, but I've heard they can't keep their hands off each other. They were even seen kissing in the corridor, and it became the talk of the guests. The memory of Serena and the man in the London hotel, their insatiable appetite for each other, and the numerous condoms weighed heavily on Mark's mood. He didn't want Serena to continue down this path. Which room are they in? He inquired urgently. Caught off guard by Mark's question, Gwen realized she didn't have the specific details. She had only half listened to Linda's plans and hadn't paid attention to the room number. Wait a moment. Let me confirm first. I don't want you to blame me later for misleading you, she responded. Gwen hastily dialed Linda's number, but on the other end, Linda was in a deep sleep and the phone went unanswered. Despite their plan to trap Serena with a hidden camera in the room, Gwen wanted Mark to witness Serena sleeping in bed with another man firsthand. Suddenly, the sound of a helicopter filled the air, growing louder as it approached. That's the sound of a helicopter. Very strange, thought Mark. The unexpected arrival of a helicopter raised eyebrows among the ship's passengers as well. Where did the helicopter come from? Gwen wondered aloud stepping outside the room to observe the circling aircraft descending towards the ship. The cruise ship allowed ample space for a helicopter to land, but the sudden arrival left the crew bewildered. Mark, the chopper seems to be descending. Who could it be? Is it some kind of terror attack? Gwen questioned. Mark put on his suit jacket and hurried to the deck. For some reason, he had a bad feeling about it. Shut up! Quickly find which room your sister is in, he demanded. Meanwhile, the crew kept gesturing to the helicopter to stop it from landing. Inside the helicopter, Lance's expression was not good. Sir, the deck is full of people. It's not easy to land, he pointed out. Leo replied, then we have to land forcefully. Lance was worried. Sir, what if we hurt someone? He queried. Leo did not care anymore. If someone's dead, I'll take responsibility. Descend, he ordered and was worried about what had happened to Serena. He couldn't worry himself about anyone else right now. When the staff on the deck saw the helicopter getting closer, their expressions changed. One of them signaled, This does not look good. The helicopter is going to land forcefully. Everyone, quickly disperse. There was no prior information about a helicopter landing. The crew responsible for passenger safety on the cruise ship had been making hand gestures to forbid the descent, but the people above did not seem to care at all. The ship's captain is in trouble. The helicopter is about to land by force, someone shouted. The wind brought by the helicopter blew everyone's hair and clothes. Many people were afraid that this might be a kind of attack. Seeing this, the captain had no choice. The people on the helicopter obviously didn't care about their lives. He yelled at the top of his voice, Everyone, come back, spread out, don't stay in dangerous areas. Carter rushed over when he heard the noise. Although he did not know what exactly was going on, he was responsible for the safety of the others on the ship. All of you retreat to the safety zone, he requested the guests. Soon the deck was clear, and the helicopter landed safely. The door opened, and they saw a man emerge from the chopper. He had dazzling blonde hair and blue eyes. Even from afar, they could feel the intimidating aura coming from the man's body. Who was this person? None of them had seen him before, except for Carter. He had seen this man once before. Serena had called him Leo. Mark was also surprised. He questioned, Leo, why are you here? Where is Serena? Leo asked as he suddenly grabbed Mark's collar. He was her husband, right? He should know where she was. Mark was taken completely by surprise by Leo's sudden appearance. How did he know Serena was here? Why did he care so much? And why did he land a helicopter on a cruise filled with important people? But above all, why was Leo filled with such anger? Carter, too, had his own questions about the connection between Leo and Serena. But now was not the time to seek answers. He came forward and said, 
Sir, I am the host of this boat. Let me find out. Conflicting emotions surged through Mark's heart. He had sensed something weird between Serena and Leo on previous occasions, but he couldn't quite put his finger on it. When he had witnessed Leo and Lydia together in London, he had dismissed those thoughts. Yet now, with Leo's sudden arrival and his intense concern for Serena, those unsettling feelings resurfaced. Mark couldn't help but worry. Leo glared at Mark coldly and asked, Don't you know where she is? I wasn't with her last night. Why are you here looking for Serena? Mark inquired, his confusion evident. Gwen interjected, revealing the room number. She's in room 999. For Gwen, this was the perfect opportunity to expose Serena in the arms of another man. No man would tolerate such a repugnant woman, and Mark would naturally divorce Serena without her having to say a word. Upon hearing Gwen's words, Leo dashed towards the rooms without hesitation. Mark and Carter exchanged a puzzled glance. They couldn't comprehend why this man was so desperate to find Serena. They swiftly followed Leo, Mark's intuition growing stronger with each passing moment. Finally, Leo located room 999. The door was jammed, and there was no response to their knocks. Carter began to realize that something was amiss. Just break down the door, he suggested. Before Carter could finish his sentence, Leo forcefully kicked open the door with a resounding bang. The three of them stood frozen in shock as they took in the horrifying sight before them. Serena was slumped against the wall, her evening dress stained with blood. She appeared like a discarded rag doll, and beside her on the carpet was a dagger. There was a lot of dried up blood beside her. Her head was lowered and no one could figure out if she was dead or alive. Even Leo, who already knew what had happened from the text message, suddenly widened his eyes when he saw this scene. Serena! He screamed. Mark and Carter were also stunned. What exactly happened last night? Leo's heart pounded with a range of emotions. Panic, fear, and worry. There was not much distance between the door and Serena, but for Leo, it felt like an eternity. The three of them rushed towards Serena, but the motionless person in blood seemed to have heard only Leo's voice. The tiny head slowly lifted up. Leo saw that Serena's pale little face was splashed with a few drops of blood. She blinked her eyes and confirmed that the person in front of her was Leo without a doubt. Leo, is that you? She asked weakly. Leo had arrived in front of her and saw the wound on her thigh. He wanted to hug her tightly, but he was afraid that he would hurt her. At that moment, Serena was as light as a feather. Serena, I'm sorry. I was late. Leo apologized and his body couldn't help but tremble. That delicate little face showed a proud smile. No, Leo. You came. You finally came. I didn't let anyone touch me, she replied as her smile faded bit by bit. Serena, who had been holding up, finally gave up and fell into Leo's arms. Leo, what happened? Mark asked, and was also shocked by this scene. Carter couldn't understand what had conspired. She was perfectly fine last night. At that moment, Leo had only one thing on his mind. He picked Serena up to leave. Mark stood in front of Leo and said, Leo, Serena is my wife. Let me take her. Leo's gaze locked onto his nephew, indifference radiating from his eyes. Mark witnessed Leo's intent to take Serena away, and though they had lived in peace all these years, he couldn't simply stand by and watch as Leo took his injured wife. Even if their marital status was unknown to others, Leo was well aware of their relationship. But why was Leo acting this way? Leo abruptly halted, fixing a cold stare on Mark. His anger had reached its peak, yet his face remained eerily calm, emanating an aura that sent shivers down one's spine. Leo locked eyes with Mark, his voice resonating with each deliberate word. Mark, haven't you always yearned to discover the man behind Serena? He gritted. He gave a pause and announced, Well, it's me. She is my woman. Mark was shocked to the core. He grabbed Leo's clothes. Leo, how could you do such a thing? In relation, she is your niece. If you wanted revenge on the Barkley family, you shouldn't use her as a pawn. He growled. Leo smiled contemptuously. You mean my nephew's wife? Is your marriage even legal? Where is your marriage certificate? Mark, don't make yourself sound so noble. 
It was just a marriage of convenience and you used her as a shield to continue your relationship with Haley. He snapped. Leo was fuming. At least I am someone who truly loves her. And soon, she will end her relationship with you. She will be Mrs. Leo Damon. You clearly cannot protect her. This is not the first time that she is in pain and you are unaware. Leo no longer cared about the consequences. He just wanted to let people know that Serena was his. Leo carried Serena and left with big strides toward the waiting helicopter. Carter was stunned. As a bystander who had just met Serena not long ago, what did he just hear? The person Serena actually liked was Mark's uncle, and she was not lawfully wedded to Mark. Everything started to fall into place for Carter. Why did Serena not mind seeing Mark with another woman? Because they were not really husband and wife. Initially, he was glad that she wasn't married, but when he thought about the relationship between her and Leo, Carter felt dejected. Mark watched Leo leave with Serena in his arms. Clearly, he wanted to stop him, but at that moment, letting them go was the right thing to do. She needed medical attention. Serena, of all the people in the world, you just had to choose him. Mark raged internally. Seeing Serena's thigh injured, her beautiful evening dress torn into strips of cloth, the bandaged wound, the carpet was splashed with blood, and every drop of blood was making Mark's heart suffocate. Leo said that he would completely cut her connection with him. She would become his wife. There was only him and Carter left in the room. Mark let go of his tightly clenched fists and pushed the frame of his glasses on his nose bridge. The eyes behind them were dark and unclear, making it hard to see clearly. Mark spoke first. Mr. Carter, I need a favor from you. Please, Mr. Barclay, Carter said. Can you keep everything that you saw and heard today a secret? He pleaded. Carter knew what would happen if these things were out, so he nodded without thinking. Don't worry, Mr. Barclay. I won't say a word, he assured him. Gwen, Linda, and the others were rushing over to the room to know what was happening. But what they saw was a shocking scene. Serena was being carried into Leo's arms with her bare feet. The hem of her evening dress had been stripped. Her body was stained with blood and her eyes were closed. One could not know if she was dead or alive. How could it be like this? What happened last night? Both Gwen and Linda wondered. Leo already understood that since Mark and Carter did not know where Serena was, they did not know what had happened to Serena. Who could have drugged Serena? He coldly swept his gaze across everyone's faces. The person who harmed her was here. He would definitely not let that person off easily. The crowd was discussing animatedly. George Walter felt very guilty when he saw the blood on Serena's dress. Although he was not the one who drugged her, he was the reason why she was in this state. He watched as the tall man carried Serena onto the helicopter. Was that person Leo? Gwen and Linda were also stunned. Gwen questioned Linda. How did Serena become like this? Look at her body covered in blood. Is she going to die? Why are you asking me this? I only drugged her and did not do anything else. Even if she dies, it has nothing to do with me, Linda said with fear. Gwen turned at her directly and snapped. Who said it had nothing to do with you? The special potion was yours. You ensured that she would be drugged. And you sent a man yourself to take advantage of the situation. Linda was furious. Gwen, you shameless tramp. It was you who asked me to join hands. You wanted Serena out of your way. Now that something has gone wrong, you are blaming me, she roared. Gwen was elated inside. She had already achieved her goal. It would be better if Serena died. She could marry Mark legally. Not only that, but she also had a $10 million check from Mark. There were only benefits and no disadvantages for her. Gwen coolly said, Don't accuse me of things I did not do. I didn't get involved in anything. I don't even know about you and Serena. Unlike Linda, who was anxious, Gwen was in a good mood. She remembered the time Linda mocked her in the mall. Gwen was petty, shrewd, and manipulative since childhood. Once something or someone was of no use to her, she would discard them like an old shoe. And the agreement between her and Linda was only verbal. There was no record whatsoever. What evidence did Linda have to prove that she had joined forces with her? Linda spewed at her. Gwen, you are so vicious. Serena is really unlucky to have a younger sister like you. 
that statement did not shake Gwen at all. You better pray that nothing happened to Serena. Otherwise, you will go to jail and I will marry my Mark, Gwen said and left proudly. She did the right thing by representing the Jenner family on the cruise. She knew that Mark would definitely come. It was just that she had never thought that she would gain so much, killing two birds with one stone. Linda was frustrated. If she had known that Gwen was so horrible, she would not have joined hands with her. It was too late to regret it now. She aggressively looked for George. Mark left the bloody room with a gloomy face. What exactly happened last night? It looked like it must have something to do with Gwen. Meanwhile, he was still thinking about Leo and Serena. He couldn't accept it. Leo was someone that Mark's grandfather valued the most ever since they were young. No matter how outstanding Mark was, in his grandfather's eyes, Leo was always the only one. Mark closed his eyes, and his thoughts drifted back to Serena and Leo. Although the two of them had agreed to not interfere in each other's private lives since the beginning, at this moment, he had an inexplicable feeling of being betrayed in his heart. Carter stayed in the room alone to digest everything he had heard. His mood was very complicated. It was undeniable that he had feelings for Serena. Now it seemed that her life was very complicated. It was better for him not to get involved in this mess. Just as he was about to leave, he discovered that there was actually a camera in the room. He walked towards the camera and clicked on the playback function. Serena and a waiter came in. That person asked her to wait for him in the room. It seemed that Serena was also deceived into coming into the room like he was last night. He continued, seeing her wait for a while and start to eat the dessert in the room. He skipped the video a little till he saw a man come in. At this time, Serena had already begun to feel that something was not right. Serena and the man seemed to know each other for a long time, and he wanted to take this opportunity to get close to her. There was a certain argument going on. Serena suddenly grabbed a knife to defend herself. Carter played the entire video and knew what had happened. That man Leo was so important to her, so important that she would rather die than let someone come close to her. He sighed heavily. He did not know whether he should applaud Serena's persistence or his helplessness. He put away the camera. He had to give everyone an explanation for what had happened on his boat. As for the young man, he seemed to be from a small business family. He should be able to clarify everything. On the deck, everyone was still amazed by the helicopter that came and went in a hurry. Carter walked to George's side and asked, Mr. Walter, can I have a word with you? George had met Carter the previous day for just a couple of minutes, and he had been singled out among the sea of people present on the boat. Did he know something? Mr. Burke, what's the matter? George asked warily. This is not the place to talk. Please follow me, Carter signaled him. Although Carter's tone was calm, it was not hard to see the coldness in his eyes. George nervously followed him into a room. Tell me, Mr. Burke, how can I help you? He asked. Help? I already know what happened last night. I know it was you who drugged Miss Jenner, Carter announced. His tone was angry but composed. His intuition said that there was more to the story than what he saw in the video. George clearly liked Serena very much. But from the video, it could be seen that he did not want to hurt Serena. Therefore, he might not be the one who drugged her. Carter wanted to know the truth from him. Mr. Burke, I was there, but I swear it was not me who drugged her. George lied and was now sweating. Carter nodded. I believe you, George. That's why I invited you here to tell me everything. Who is that person? There was a camera in the room last night, and the evidence is in my hands. Carter reminded him of this fact and told him not to play any tricks. George was so nervous that his palms were sweating. It was Linda. She said she drugged Serena and she convinced me that if I force her to sleep with me, she would record it and play it to Mark so that they would get divorced. I was drunk and was raging that she was married to someone else. He stated and paused before adding, I never thought of hurting Serena. I like her so much I didn't know things would turn out like this. It was indeed Linda. Carter knew she was connected to it, as she had used Serena's name to lure him into a room with herself. Carter asked again, Are you sure? George replied confidently, positive. Thank you, Mr. Walter, for your cooperation. 
We might require you to give this statement again, Carter murmured. Yes, I will do my best to cooperate. It is because of me that Serena is in this state, George grumbled, his tone apologetic. Carter already had a plan in mind. Okay, you can leave now, he announced. Thank you. George felt a chill down his spine when he walked out of the door. Carter Burke was scary. At the other end of the cruise, Mark had found Gwen. Gwen looked at him sweetly and asked, Mark, did you miss me? Mark grabbed Gwen by the neckline of her dress and demanded, It was you who drugged Serena, right? Gwen was taken aback by this sudden confrontation. Mark, what are you talking about? Serena was drugged? I have no idea about it, she snapped. Mark was raging. Stop acting all innocent. You hate Serena and you have absolutely no concern for her. You want her out of the picture and you are very capable of harming her, he roared. Gwen spoke in a low voice. Mark, this matter has nothing to do with me. I really don't know. However, Mark was not convinced. Gwen, you are such a dangerous woman. Do you think that if you keep denying it and I won't be able to get to the truth... I will not let go of anyone who harms Serena, you included. And you will pay the price for it, he warned. Gwen looked at Mark pitifully. Mark, it really is not me. It is Linda. She is the one who hates my sister more than me, she informed him. On the other hand, Leo had arranged for a paramedic from the cruise to accompany them on the helicopter. Serena was lying flat, allowing the paramedic to bandage her wound. Leo saw how deep the cut was, and still, he couldn't imagine how she could do this to herself. She was someone who was terrified of pain. Lance could not bear to open his eyes. Miss Jenner is either too brave or completely foolish, he commented. Leo was stumped by the move she made and her devotion and love towards him. No wonder he loved her so much. She was worth it. The paramedic was done with first aid soon. Sir, the blood in the wound has stopped. We need to get to the hospital as soon as possible. There is no time to delay. She needs blood at the earliest, one of them announced. Leo was glad that they were in a helicopter. It would avoid unnecessary traffic. This way, it would only take about 10 minutes to get to the hospital. Serena's face was so pale that it was scary. Leo was afraid that she would not wake up. Soon after, they landed at the hospital, where everything was arranged beforehand so that Serena would be able to receive the blood transfusion when she arrived. He used a hot towel to gently wipe the blood on her face. His movements were so gentle, afraid that he would wake her up. Once the procedure started and they were informed that she was out of danger, Leo's heart gradually calmed down. Sir, you haven't recovered from last night's accident yourself. Why don't you take this time to grab some rest? Otherwise, you will not be able to hold on. Miss Jenner needs your support, Lance suggested. Leo had no intention of resting. His peach was still unconscious. How could he rest? He stayed right by her side through the night. Serena was in an unconscious state till the wee hours of the morning. The moment she regained consciousness, she felt immense pain. It hurts, she said feebly. Peach, you're awake, Leo exclaimed. He had been holding her hand all this time. The moment she woke up, he felt as if the sun had shone in his dark life. Serena's lips dried up and her voice was hoarse. Leo, it's really you. I thought I was dreaming. It's me, Peach. You're not dreaming. I'm really by your side, Leo assured her. Leo, I thought I would bleed to death. You're finally here, Serena croaked as tears rolled down her cheeks. She finally made it. Leo wanted to hug her, but he was scared of hurting her. Peach, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. Leo gently hugged her body. She was such a weak little flower. How did she survive this storm? Peach, I promise you that I won't let this happen in the future. Leo croaked and was sobbing too. Serena hugged his neck tightly. It's not your fault, my love. I was deceived because I wasn't careful. But I remember what you said. I didn't let anyone touch me. I didn't break my promise. She smiled. You big fool. If I had known this would be the outcome, I would have preferred otherwise, Leo said. Serena put her finger on his lips. Don't ever say that. I wouldn't do anything that would hurt you, Leo, she whispered. Leo met her gentle eyes. He had always thought Serena was too weak. Now he knew that she was stronger than he had imagined. 
Peach, you're too reckless. Leo sighed and wiped away the tears from her eyes. Serena smiled. It has been proven that persistence is not wrong. I knew that you would not let me be in danger. I knew you'd come. Leo chided her. You can't be so impulsive next time. What if something happens to you? How will I survive? I am already all alone. Never say you are alone, Leo. I will always be by your side, Serena promised. Serena was not aware of Leo's accident yet. Neither did she know what had happened on the cruise ship. Nor did she know that Leo had finally announced their relationship. By the way, Leo, how did I get here? She inquired. Leo's expression suddenly turned serious. Peach, I want to tell you something. You need to be mentally prepared, he announced. Leo, why are you scaring me? Is everything all right? Who did you kill? She demanded. Leo gently brushed away the messy hair on her face and smiled. I didn't kill anyone, Peach. I picked you up by helicopter, he informed her. Helicopter? That means everybody saw? She asked, wide-eyed. Not only did everyone see it, but I also told Mark about our relationship, Leo blurted. What? You told Mark? Serena shrieked and was so angry that she wanted to sit up. The wound on her body was so painful that she grimaced. Leo quickly calmed her down. Don't get worked up, Peach. Relax. Serena felt like the sky was falling. Leo added, Peach, calm down and listen to me first. Things are not as bad as you think. When I said it, only Mark and Carter were there. The others were not there. It concerns the reputation of the Barclay family and Mark's own interests. He would never be careless with this information. Secondly, Carter is a smart person. It won't do him any good if this matter is spread out. He naturally won't get himself into trouble. At that time, the situation was critical. Everyone saw how injured you were. I was in a hurry to take you to the hospital. They will probably think that Mark alerted me as his uncle and a family member to come to get you. I think we're safe for now. Serena then let out a heavy breath and then asked, what did Mark say? Leo found himself at a loss when it came to revealing the heated exchange of words that had transpired between him and Mark to Serena. Aware of the immense stress and pain she was already enduring from the events of the previous night, Leo struggled to find the right words. Nevertheless, he mustered the courage to speak, saying, Of course, Mark was taken aback. But I am glad that it happened. It ensures that he won't harbor any misguided emotions toward you in the future. I think he might help us since it will help him get closer to Haley. Serena's eyes widened in surprise. Are you sure about that? She asked. Leo smiled reassuringly. Mark has feelings for Haley, and I have feelings for you. Now that our relationship is out in the open, it'll be easier for us to have a conversation about breaking the agreement with Mark. Peach, please don't worry. Leave everything to me. Serena nodded feeling a mixture of relief and uncertainty. Leo had mentioned that even Carter knew about their relationship, but she couldn't help but wonder what he thought of her. Regardless, she reasoned that they wouldn't be crossing paths again, so it didn't matter much. She decided to focus on Leo's advice and take some time to rest and stop worrying. Leo had thought through every detail and had meticulously planned how to navigate their relationship going forward. Little did he know that Mark had already fallen in love with Serena. As the cruise ship slowly docked at the shore, Mark disembarked with a gloomy expression. James, his assistant, was waiting for him. As soon as Mark arrived, James inquired, Mr. Barkley, where is Miss Jenner? Mark replied emotionlessly. She left earlier than expected. James nodded, but he couldn't help but find it a bit peculiar. The cruise ship had just docked, and he hadn't seen Serena disembark. How did she leave? However, given Mark's recent temperamental behavior, James didn't dare to ask too many questions. Suddenly, they heard an annoying voice calling out, Mark, where are you going? Take me with you. It was Gwen, who still hadn't gotten over him. Mark looked at her as if she had grown two heads. How dare you, he growled, before getting into the car and ordering James drive to the Jenner family mansion. Yes, Mr. Barclay, James replied. He had a nagging feeling that something had happened on the cruise ship. Why would Mark be so angry with Gwen? 
She was, after all, his wife's sister. If he was going to the Jenner mansion, why wasn't he giving her a ride? When Mark arrived at the Jenner family mansion, Serena's parents were already waiting. He had called them when he was on the way. Mr. Barkley, please come in. Mr. Jenner welcomed him. Mark got down to business. As discussed earlier on the phone, I hope you have dismissed the staff in your house for the day. Yes, Mr. Barkley, replied Mrs. Jenner. That's good. I do not want any of the details of this meeting to find its way out, Mark said. I came here today for two reasons. First, I need your complete support and blessing. Mr. and Mrs. Jenner looked at him with caution and confusion. Mr. Barclay, what do you need our support and blessing for? Mr. Jenner asked. Mark's unexpected call in the morning, then requesting complete secrecy for the meeting. And now this conversation about support and blessings threw Serena's parents off guard. Both of them felt a sense of wariness. Serena and I have been pretending to be married for a while now, and we haven't had an official reception or received our marriage certificate yet. So I came here to specifically discuss this matter. I am thinking of making our marriage official. My mother is very fond of Serena, and everyone back home loves her. It would only make sense for us to officiate everything. And while we are discussing the details of this, I would also like to talk about the special agreement we made before I got into a contract with Serena, he announced. Upon hearing Mark's intention to marry Serena for real, their faces lit up with joy. Mr. Barclay, is what you're saying true? Serena's mother asked. If Serena had a marriage ceremony and a certificate to back it, she would become a true member of the Barclay family. This was an incredible opportunity for them. The Jenners were overjoyed. On the other hand, at the hospital, Serena was resisting taking her medicine, complaining to Leo. Leo, it tastes so bitter. I really don't want to take it. She whined and looked at him with a pout. Leo gently comforted her, saying, Don't worry, it's just capsules. They're not bitter at all. Serena had disliked injections and medicine since she was young. Fortunately, she had always been physically fit and hadn't experienced any major illnesses. Even when she had a minor cold, she relied on drinking hot water and rest to recover. She rarely had to take medicine. That's why she had been so afraid when she had to undergo surgery for acute appendicitis. How could someone who disliked taking medicine even consider having surgery? In addition to the capsules, there are also some oral fluids. But trust me, your body has the ability to heal itself. Just wait for the wound to heal naturally, Leo added as he playfully scratched the tip of her nose. Why are you like this? Most people would want to get better quickly if they were injured, but you don't even want to take medicine. What if it leaves a scar on your body? If I end up with a scar, will it bother you? Serena asked. Do you really think it would bother me? Leo countered and smirked mischievously. Serena thought about the scar from her appendicitis surgery. He had never considered it ugly. No, it won't, she replied with a smile. Even if it doesn't bother me, you still need to take your medicine. It will help you heal faster. Look, I even bought some candy for you. You can have it after taking your medicine, okay? Leo offered. Serena hadn't expected the medicine ordeal to turn into a negotiation. After some prodding from him, she finally agreed, saying, Okay. Good girl, Leo praised, patting her head. With Leo's gentle encouragement, Serena took her medicine, and Leo promptly rewarded her with candy. Does it still taste bitter? He questioned. No, not anymore. Serena smiled then noticed Carter at the door. Carter, when did you arrive? Carter had witnessed the entire scene from outside. Serena, with her delicate face wrinkled in discomfort as she lay on the bed. Carter had never seen Serena like this before, acting like a child and behaving playfully with Leo. This side of Serena was reserved for people she truly liked. Suppressing his own disappointment, he calmly walked into the room and replied, I just arrived. Miss Jenner, how is your condition? Serena had experienced an accident on his cruise ship. As the host of the banquet, it was only natural for Carter to come and visit her. I'm much better now, Serena smiled. I'm glad to hear that. I was terrified when I saw you covered in blood, Carter expressed, placing a delicate box of pastries on the table. He was sure that Serena would appreciate food more than fresh flowers. I think it just looked more severe than it actually was, Serena muttered. 
casually shrugging it off. However, Leo couldn't help but interject at that. Severe? Do you realize that if we would have waited till the ship docked, your life would have been in danger? Serena made a face. Well, I'm just glad that I'm fine now. Thank you very much, she expressed. Mr. Damon, apart from visiting Miss Jenner, I also have something to discuss with you, Carter said, addressing Leo. Before coming here, Carter had been concerned about Serena's complicated love life. But upon seeing Serena and Leo together, he realized that she was genuinely happy. Okay. Leo set aside the candy. Serena, we have some business to discuss. You can call me if you need anything. Sure, Serena replied. Leo and Carter walked out of the room. This was the third time they had crossed paths, but they had never engaged in a conversation before. Mr. Damon, as the host of the banquet, I sincerely apologize for the horrific incident that your guest had to go through, Carter expressed with a hint of apology. Leo brushed off Carter's apology, showing his lack of concern. He replied, No need for all the formalities. How did such a grave incident manage to unfold right under your watch? This person was indeed different from Mark, Carter thought. He didn't bother with niceties or pleasantries. Mr. Damon, I have already conducted an investigation into the events of that night. As for how to handle those two individuals involved, it's up to you, Carter replied. Leo didn't expect Carter to have already taken such swift action in gathering information. This would save them valuable time. What did you find out? Leo inquired. Carter and Leo were outside Serena's hospital room discussing the entire scene that unfolded on the cruise ship. Carter, what did you find out? Leo asked, and Carter handed him a memory card and disclosed, this contains the evidence. It is the footage from the camera present in the room where Serena was found injured. Miss Linda Coleman is the one who planned all this. George Walter, the man in the video, was also manipulated by Linda. If you wish to bring her to justice, you will have the necessary proof and evidence. However, this may tarnish Miss Jenner's reputation. Considering this, I have come to seek your opinion on how to proceed. Both men were smart, and even though Carter didn't directly say what he meant, Leo understood what he was trying to convey. Leo intended to exact revenge discreetly, I'll make sure to give her a taste of her own medicine, he responded with determination. Carter's expression remained unchanged. He then handed Leo a document. This contains information about the Coleman family, he stated. Leo took a deep look at Carter. It was evident that he was not an ordinary individual. He accepted the document along with Carter's business card. Thank you. I will reach out if I require your assistance, he expressed. Very well. Carter replied simply, I hope Miss Jenner will recover soon. I still have some things to settle, so I will take your leave. Please accept my apologies. Leo observed the refined demeanor of Carter's back. He exuded an air of sophistication and gentlemanly charm. But Carter was far from gentlemanly. He was a wolf disguised in sheep's clothing. Leo returned to the room to find Serena already indulging in a dessert. As he recalled the past encounter between Carter and Serena in London, he felt relieved that Carter didn't harbor any ulterior motives toward her. Leo, what did Carter say? Serena asked eagerly. He informed me about who drugged you and got you into this mess, Leo replied. Serena's eyes widened. Who was it? She asked. She couldn't tolerate someone treating her in such a way, especially considering the near-death experience she had just gone through. It was Linda, Leo revealed. Linda? That disgusting woman who had a problem with me since school? I never imagined she would stoop so low with her plotting and scheming. I can't believe how bitter she has become, Serena shrieked, taken aback by the shocking revelation. Peach, right now, what you need to do is rest and recover. I will take care of dealing with her, Leo assured her, not wanting Serena to be burdened with the dark side of things. He wanted her to stay away from all the mess and put her trust in him. Serena had unwavering faith in Leo. She believed that he would seek justice on her behalf, which reduced her anger. Leo, this pastry is delicious. You should try it, Serena suggested with a smile. Leo smiled back at her, 
He recalled how just last night she had almost died, yet today she was all smiles as if everything was going great. Her smile had the power to heal everything, and Leo resolved to protect it at all costs. All right, I'll give it a try, he agreed, even though he wasn't particularly fond of desserts. He would try them over and over again for her. I'm enjoying it, he responded mischievously. Serena felt that life was fun only when she was with him. If only she could get rid of Mark and be with Leo as soon as possible. My dear Peach, what are you thinking about? What are you so focused on? He questioned. Serena smiled. Leo, when can we be together openly? She asked. Soon, very soon, I promise, Leo assured her. At the same time, Serena's phone rang, and she noticed it was Gwen calling. As far as Serena's memory stretched, Gwen had never called her. Hello, she answered. My dear sister, are you okay? Gwen asked, and was just calling to check if Serena survived, wondering if it was her chance to be the next Mr. Barclay. It's nothing serious, muttered Serena. Gwen was disappointed. She had seen how badly Serena was injured, but she seemed perfectly fine. She was just too lucky. Really? I'm glad you're okay. I saw you lose so much blood, and I was really worried, Gwen replied, although Serena sensed a lack of genuine concern in her tone. Don't worry, I'm fine, Serena reassured, trying to keep the conversation to a minimum. Serena, why was it Leo and not Mark who rushed you for medical care the other day? Gwen asked. She sensed that something was off. Serena panicked and struggled to maintain her composure. At that time, I had lost a lot of blood and I was not in my senses. I accidentally dialed Leo's number instead of Mark's. I didn't know what else to do, so I asked him for help. Being the gentleman that he is, he immediately arrived. And the rest, you already know, she replied. I see. Leo is really good to you, Gwen remarked, a hint of jealousy creeping into her tone. Leo is good to me because I am his family, Serena replied, wiping the sweat off her forehead. Take care and get some rest. I won't bother you anymore, Gwen replied and hung up, satisfied with the information she had obtained. Serena also relaxed. Leo teased her. You seem cheerful after talking to your dear sister. Oh, I wish... Gwen and I haven't had a good relationship since we were young, so her showing concern for me is something to be happy about, Serena said. Silly girl, if she truly cared, she would have come to see you. I didn't sense genuine concern in her behavior, Leo commented. Serena's expression froze. Maybe Gwen isn't great at expressing her feelings, she suggested. Peach, based on what you've told me, the Jenners haven't been kind to you. There's something very strange about the way they've always treated you. You need to stop blindly trusting the Jenners, even if they're your family, Leo advised. He didn't have a good impression of the Jenners, and Gwen was no exception. Serena was trusting and naive, believing that the world was filled with kindness, unaware of the dark reality. Leo understood how the world worked, and he knew that Serena had been deceived by her family. Leo, but they're my family. Even if they're not kind, they're still my family. Serena protested, feeling confused by his behavior. I'm not asking you to cut ties with them. I'm simply telling you not to trust them, Leo reiterated. Okay, whether they're sincere or not doesn't matter. From now on, all I need is for you to care about me, Leo, she pouted again. You are the only one I will ever truly care for, Peach, he stated, emphasizing each word. Even though Serena had been putting on a smile and pretending that everything was fine in front of Leo, her body still hadn't fully recovered, and she was incredibly weak. Leo comforted her and made sure she fell asleep before leaving the room. Lance had got him his laptop to access the contents of the memory card. The footage was disturbing, and even Lance felt uneasy watching it. Miss Jenner was very brave, he commented. Leo's eyes darkened. He spoke with determination, enunciating each word. I said I would make sure Linda Coleman pays for this. Seems like payback will not be enough. Sir, I won't stop you this time. What this woman Linda did to Miss Jenner is inhuman, Lance expressed his disgust. Whenever Leo was enraged, Lance would always fear that he would go too far for revenge. But this time, even Lance couldn't restrain himself. A woman with malicious intentions like Linda deserved to be taught a lesson. Leo read the information about the Coleman's that Carter had provided. 
he discovered that Linda's mother was a liquor vendor who later became involved with Linda's father, Peter Coleman, and gave birth to her. Linda was an illegitimate child. During Linda's time at university, her father officially divorced his previous wife and married Linda's mother, granting Linda status in the Coleman family. Leo vaguely recalled that the Colemans had expressed interest in partnering with them some time ago. Leo questioned Lance. The Colemans had come to discuss potential projects, right? I remember Peter Coleman. He's not a bad person, but unfortunately, he didn't raise a good daughter. If I recall correctly, the Coleman group primarily focuses on skincare and cosmetic products, am I correct? Yes, sir. Their family is known for working with reputable international cosmetic brands. They've been in the industry for over 30 years and have only recently expanded into real estate in the past two years, Lance replied. It's quite an achievement for a brand to have such a long history, Leo murmured as he lit his lighter. Are you planning something against the Coleman Group? Lance asked. Linda's arrogance stems from the reputation of the Coleman name. I want to see what happens when she loses that shield, Leo replied. The fire in Leo's eyes burned brighter as he delved deeper into the information regarding the Colemans. Leo had read every detail which Carter had collected and provided about Colemans. The sight of a majestic, long-standing tree being annihilated is nothing short of breathtaking. The scene will be spectacular. I can't wait to see it, Leo told Lance. Lance felt the coldness from Leo's body and instantly shivered. Serena was the priceless treasure in Leo's heart. This time, the Colemans were doomed. On the other hand, Serena was sleeping soundly on the bed, completely unaware of what was going on outside. Leo changed into his pajamas and lay beside her. My peach, even if the whole world is your enemy, I will fight against them and protect you with all I have got. Just view the world with the innocence and beauty that you do. I will keep you happy for the rest of your life, he whispered. The following day, the sun rose, and the warm sunlight shone through the window and onto the woman on the bed. Serena's porcelain skin glowed under the sunlight, and her thick eyelashes cast a circle of light. Lance appeared at the door and said, Sir, Mr. Mark Barkley is here. Leo and Mark had a disagreement aboard the cruise the day Serena was injured. It was not an overly intense fight, but now, as Mark made an unexpected appearance, Leo couldn't discern if it would bring favorable or unfavorable consequences. Mark's face was as calm and composed as it usually was. The corner of his mouth curled up slightly. Leo, even his tone was the same as before. Hearing his voice, Serena woke up from her sleep and rubbed her sleepy eyes. She felt a little awkward when she saw Mark at the door. Although Leo had already told her about the altercation between the two of them, she was not ready to face Mark. Mark. Her voice was low and weak. Mark came over to her side, his expression becoming gentle as he looked at her. Serena, how are you? He asked. I'm fine, Serena replied uncomfortably. Leo did not like the way Mark looked at Serena. It was not the way he used to look at Serena before. Mark smiled at Leo. I did not know Leo had such a gentle, romantic side to him. Grandpa scouted many suitable, rich young ladies for you earlier. You have rejected his proposals so many times that we thought you were suffering from some hidden disease. But it looks like we were wrong, he commented. Leo replied coldly, Serena would know better than anyone else whether I have a hidden disease or not. Do you want her to tell you personally, my dear nephew? Serena and Lance could feel the intense energy passing between the two of them. Mark and Leo were never cordial, but he did not ever deliberately provoke Leo. There was something different about Mark today. Was this different because of Serena? Thinking of this, Leo's eyes darkened. There was only one reason why a man changed because of a woman. Mark folded his arms across his chest and spoke, Leo, I am here to take my wife home. Serena, come home with me. I have hired a private doctor for you. I spoke to the doctor who attended to you before I came here. What you need to do now is to rest well. Serena was a little confused. I have no idea what you are talking about, Mark, she murmured. Why was he acting so strange? What do you mean you have no idea, Serena? Our home. We are married, remember? 
Mark looked at her lovingly, a smile gracing his lips. Mark, what's wrong with you? Why are you speaking so strangely? Serena questioned as she unable to understand Mark's intention. Our marriage is not official and nobody other than our families is aware of it. We decided we would not interfere with each other's private lives. Leo and I truly love each other. I want to be with him, Serena stated seriously. Mark maintained a smile on his face. Who said we are not official? He countered. As he spoke, he handed over a photocopy of the marriage certificate. Serena's expression changed drastically when she saw it. Mark, are you out of your mind? We clearly did not receive a marriage certificate. Where did this come from? Serena roared and was now in a state of panic. Mark smiled at her. It's all thanks to Leo for reminding me that we have been married for so long and have yet to receive the marriage certificate, that I am irresponsible with you, and that I do not have the ability to care for you. He added, That's why I went to the city hall and got our marriage certificate along the way. From now on, you're my wife, officially. So let's go home, Mrs. Barclay. At that moment, Serena felt like her whole world had come crashing down. Mark, is this some kind of a joke? She whispered. Serena, I never joke around, Mark replied seriously. The veins on the back of Leo's hand grew prominent. Wasn't Mark in love with Haley? Why did he do this? What good would it do him? Mark, what is the meaning of all this? Aren't you in love with Haley? Leo asked and was unable to guess Mark's intentions. He felt that the certificate was very likely fake. It could be an altered photocopy. Even if it was, what was the need to behave like this? Mark composed himself and spoke. Leo, you are right about me being in love with Haley, but that was in the past. I got into an agreement for a fake wedding was to protect Haley. You see, I didn't want anyone else. But as time went by and I spent time with Serena, I found that Serena was the perfect one for me. Leo was enraged. Perfect one? Do you think you are trying on clothes in a mall before buying one? He growled. Mark's mood brightened as he observed Leo's frustration. Leo, in matters of love, everything is fair game. If we explore other options and discover something we prefer, don't we choose it? After all, didn't you try before you decided to love her? He countered. Serena felt like her heart would fly out of her chest. She had just come to terms with the fact that Mark knew about her and Leo. And now this. She could not fathom it. Since when did Mark change his opinion about her? Why was she preferred over Haley? She questioned. Mark, what do you mean by all this? You said Leo tried too. What did he try? Mark smirked. Did Leo ever tell you why he did not find a woman for so many years? Didn't he tell you he liked someone before you? He asked. Leo was furious. Shut up, he roared. Mark stopped talking. It seems like you both haven't discussed much about each other's lives. All I can say is, Serena, come with me. Serena's heart skipped a beat. Leo had told her that there was no one else but her. She turned to look at Leo with tears welling in her eyes. Leo, what Mark just said, is it true or false? She demanded. The intensity in Leo's eyes softened as he gazed at Serena. His words came out with a hint of hesitation, revealing a depth of emotion he rarely displayed. Peach, Mark is here to disrupt our world. I have buried that part of the past. If you want to know, I will tell you. I don't want to bring it up, but for you, I will. Listen to your heart. Did you ever feel that my love or my care for you was ever fake? He asked. Serena nodded. That's right. I trust you, Leo. Who doesn't have a past? Even I had a crush on Robert, but that didn't mean anything. Of course, her heart knew how good Leo was to her. Mark, if Leo liked someone in the past, so what? It doesn't matter to me. I don't know why you are doing this. Does Haley know this? She questioned. Mark did not care about anyone else's feelings anymore. You don't need to worry about Haley and me. You just need to get up and come with me. I have already told my mother about your injury. The Barclay family members are on their way here. Serena, you don't want them to know about your relationship with Leo, do you? Earlier, Leo threatened her about getting exposed in front of the Barclay family, and now it was Mark. Serena was jammed between the uncle and his nephew. Leo spoke first. So what if the Barclay family members are coming? Serena, 
Let's take this opportunity to announce our relationship. Whether it's today or tomorrow, the reaction to our relationship will never be pleasant. Mark chimed in. Serena, you have to think about whether you are ready to face everybody with this news. Serena looked at the devil in a suit in front of her in disbelief. That gentle and dignified man from before was no longer there. She did not know why he had become like this. Mark, did I have a misconception about your nature earlier? Or were you always like this? She sneered. Serena's head was spinning. It had been only a day since the incident on the cruise, and she had barely recovered. Mark had turned up this morning with some vague new developments, and she didn't understand what was happening. Mark, why are you acting so differently? Why do you want me to go with you? She questioned, her confusion evident. Mark replied with a stern look. What do you mean by why? You are my wife. That's how it should be. Serena frowned, her frustration growing. How many times do I have to repeat myself for you to understand? We agreed to not interfere with each other's love lives from the beginning. You were the one who suggested this, she reminded him. Mr. Barclay, have you forgotten? However, Mark remained resolute. That was the case earlier, Serena. I don't want to discuss this here anymore. If you have any questions, you can ask them when we get home, he announced. Mark, I don't want to go with you. I love Leo, and I go wherever he goes, Serena declared firmly, her grip on Leo tightening. She didn't know why all of this was happening. It felt like a nightmare unfolding before her eyes. Serena, this decision is not yours to make, Mark muttered and smiled mysteriously, his words carrying an unsettling undertone. Confused, Serena was interrupted by a knock on the door. In rushed four people, Mark's parents from the Barclay family and Serena's parents from the Jenner family. Lillian's voice, as usual, was over the top. Serena, I heard from Mark that you were injured. Are you okay? Lillian exclaimed, her concern laced with a touch of drama. Serena's expression changed slightly, and she loosened her grip on Leo. I'm fine, Serena replied, her gaze shifting to her parents. This was the first time they had come to see her since she moved out of their family home. Mom, Dad, you guys are here too. Serena, you're not a child anymore. You need to take care of yourself. Look at how many people are worried and scared because of the situation you have gotten yourself into, her mother remarked, her lack of genuine concern evident in her tone. Serena's face grew even paler as she realized her mother's indifference to her situation. She had hoped that her near-death experience would finally make her parents care about her, but it seemed that her mother's apathy remained unchanged. Despite narrowly escaping death, Serena rarely received any signs of care or attention from her mother. In contrast, if Gwen so much as had a minor bruise, she would have cried her lungs out. This type of differential treatment was a recurring theme in Serena and Gwen's upbringing as sisters. Instead, it was Lillian who looked worried. Mrs. Jenner, no one plans for something like this to happen. Serena is a victim of all this. Don't scold the poor child. Look at her pale face. Serena had tears in her eyes. What exactly did family love mean? Leo, it is all thanks to you that you arrived in time to save Serena. Lillian thanked him. Leo's face was cold, and he did not say a word. Mark had planned well. He brought his and Serena's parents so she had no way out. He knew Serena's weakness very well. Lillian had long gotten used to Leo's coldness. This was the first time the Jenners had seen Leo. Mr. Jenner reached out his hand to address Leo. You are Mark's uncle, Leo, right? Hello. Leo was standing still, looking at all the drama unfolding, not moving at all. He did not reply to the invite from Mr. Jenner since he did not have a good impression of Serena's parents. Lillian quickly explained, Leo rarely interacts with someone other than the Barclay family. Please don't mind. That's all right, Mr. Jenner murmured and awkwardly withdrew his hand. Serena, Mark has hired a private doctor for you. You should go home and rest. I'll help you up, Lillian said gently. Serena struggled to say, Lillian, I still am a little weak. I want to stay in the hospital. Lillian insisted, People like us have the luxury of getting treated privately at home. It is much more comfortable. 
If you eat well at home, your health will recover faster. Her mother chipped in again. That's right, why are you making all of us worry about you more? Get up and go home. But mom, Serena croaked and was overwhelmed. Lillian was relentless. Look, Mark even got you a fresh set of clothes. Put them on and let's go. The car is waiting downstairs. Serena's protests fell on deaf ears. Overwhelmed by the pressure from both families, she reluctantly got up to get dressed. Leo, who was watching everything with an icy stare, spoke. Who gave you permission to touch her? He gritted. His intense gaze was filled with fury. Serena observed his expression and realized that there was nothing that could stop Leo now. It was evident that he had made up his mind to reveal everything. She was okay with Mark being the only one to know the truth. If the Jenner and Barclay families knew about it, it would become a complete mess. Serena explained under the quizzing gazes of the people present in the room, I think Leo is worried that too much movement might reopen my wound. I will get dressed by myself. Under Leo's cold gaze, she slowly got up and went to the washroom. She clearly felt that Leo was about to explode. She turned around and said, Thank you for saving me, Leo. Her eyes pleaded with him, silently urging him not to disclose the truth, sending subtle signals to keep quiet. Leo's anger surged, rising to the brink. However, when he caught a glimpse of the desperation in the young girl's eyes, he suppressed his fury. No need to thank me, he muttered through clenched teeth. I don't save people without expecting something in return. When the time comes, I'll claim my due reward. Only Serena and Mark comprehended the underlying implications of his words. I will definitely make it up to you, Leo, once everything is settled, Serena replied. Serena, we should go, Mark said, his expression slightly displeased upon hearing their conversation. Lillian pulled Serena away, while Serena glanced back at Leo multiple times before leaving. As Mark was about to leave, Leo stopped him. Mark, I need to talk to you, he announced. Mom, you guys wait downstairs. I have something to discuss with Leo, Mark said to his family. Everyone exited the room, leaving only Mark and Leo behind. Both men exuded a strong presence. Leo spoke first. Mark, are you serious? What are your intentions? Leo, I've come to realize that I have feelings for Serena, Mark confessed, trying to validate his newfound emotions for her. I understand it's complicated, but no one can control their feelings. I tried suppressing them before and gave up, but my affection for her only grew deeper. The moment you arrived on the cruise and saved Serena and the confrontation we had afterward, made me realize my true feelings. I never meant to make you my enemy. If there needs to be any form of compensation, I'll take responsibility for it. Mark's voice wavered. Uncertainty tinged his words. Leo grabbed Mark by the collar. Do you think I am a beggar? What compensation do you think you can afford? He gritted. Mark remained unfazed by his actions. Leo... Remember that Serena is my lawful wife. It's time for you to let go, he replied. Leo's gaze turned icy cold. Impressive strategy, Mark. Is this your best game plan? Let's see if you're prepared to face the consequences, he roared. Mark maintained his composure, meeting Leo's gaze head on. I learned from the best, Leo. If you want to play, I'll play with you until the very end, he murmured. Both of them looked very serious. Leo let go of Mark. Mark, if you really like Serena, you should know that you are forcing her to do something she doesn't like. Do you honestly think that by exploiting Serena's emotions through the involvement of our families, you can coerce her into being with you? That's not how a true lover behaves, Leo remarked, his voice filled with disdain. I may have forced her today, but let's not forget that you also didn't get her by fair means either. I still remember the fear in Serena's eyes when she first met you. Mark countered. I don't believe she willingly did what you asked of her. Leo, neither of us is more virtuous than the other, so don't expect me to give up on her just because you're being nice to her. Leo observed the seemingly gentle face before him, realizing he had underestimated his nephew. Mark, if you continue down this path, Serena will only become a pawn caught between the two of us. She's the one who's getting hurt, Leo warned. Good that you realize it. For Serena's sake, you should let her go, Mark insisted. I can never let go of her. 
It's something I will never do in my life, Leo declared firmly. Both of them refused to back down. Mark's determination surged forth. Leo, whether it's the Barclay Group or Serena, I won't give up. Mark my words. You will come begging me, Leo retorted coldly. Mark had had enough of this. He said, Serena is waiting for me downstairs. I'll leave now. Leo watched his retreating figure, a bloodthirsty smile curling his lips. The Barclay Group and Serena, I'll make sure you understand what it feels like to lose everything, he roared. After the families had left, Lance entered the room and immediately felt a shiver down his spine when he saw Leo's unsettling smile. Are you all right, sir? He asked, concern evident in his voice. Leo's appearance did not match his words. His smile was more menacing than his anger, causing Lance to become even more frightened. Sir, what's your plan now? Mark's actions were a last-ditch effort. If we had known he would do something like this, we would have obtained our marriage certificate beforehand. Lance said, trying to understand the situation. Mark had clearly shown a strong affection for Haley. That's why we didn't consider it. We underestimated him, Leo grumbled and sighed, his voice filled with disappointment. People can change, including their feelings. It's just unfortunate that Haley remains unaware of all this, he added, his tone tinged with worry. Do you want me to inform Haley about this and let her handle Mark? Lance suggested, hoping for a solution. No need. Haley isn't someone to be trifled with. Once a woman loses her composure, she can do unimaginable things. I'm not worried about her hurting Mark, but rather about her damaging Serena's reputation. I have plenty of ways to deal with Mark, Leo replied calmly. Don't forget that the construction of the crematorium is already causing Mark a great deal of trouble. Losing billions would definitely raise eyebrows in the management. Lance reminded Leo. A spark ignited in Leo's eyes. How could I forget? I can use this to blackmail him, he smirked. The crematorium is a form of revenge for Serena being slapped. But this time, it's direct between him and me. I'll make sure he loses not only his reputation but everything, Leo declared fiercely. Lance realized that Leo was truly enraged. Mark was foolish in provoking him. What's your plan then? He asked. Didn't he desire the Barclay group? If he loses control of it, how do you think he'll feel? Leo sneered mockingly. Sir, are you planning to destroy the Barclay group? Lance asked as he couldn't comprehend the extent of Leo's intentions. I want him to witness it all firsthand, the downfall of the Barclay group and Serena being taken away from him. I can't wait to see how lonely he'll get. Leo growled with a hint of sadistic satisfaction. Our receptionist mentioned that Mark has been eager to see you. Should I arrange a meeting between the two of you? Sir, I'm suddenly intrigued to witness Mark's reaction when he discovers you're the CEO of LD Corporation, Lance proposed, sensing his own gradual transformation under Leo's influence. No, not yet. Let's not rush. We must take our time with this. The way he went behind Serena and secretly obtained the marriage certificate, I want him to suffer and beg for a divorce. He himself will return Serena to me, Leo stated calmly, his voice filled with determination. Serena was forcibly shoved into the car while Lillian bombarded her with questions about her health. Meanwhile, her biological mother sat there, meticulously applying lipstick and makeup. At that moment, Serena felt utterly perplexed. How could an outsider treat her with such kindness while her own mother who had given birth to her, remained so indifferent. If one day she were to pass away before her mother's eyes, would her mother feel even the slightest hint of sadness? Previously, Serena hadn't paid much attention to it, but now her feelings were growing deeper and more profound. Her mother's attitude towards her and Gwen was like night and day. Serena had hoped that this recent injury would evoke some semblance of maternal love, but it seemed like wishful thinking. She was brought back to Mark's mansion. When no one else was around, her mother approached Serena and said, Serena, you need to act quickly and give Mark a child. Do you really think Mark will stick around if you behave like this? He might change his mind and stop caring about you. Give birth to Mark's child? Serena shrieked and her expression changed slightly. Mom, what are you talking about? 
I'm afraid you're too naive to understand. While Mark loves you a lot, giving him a child will secure your position in the Barclay family. Besides, you are young and fertile in comparison to a woman who can't conceive, her mother stated, her words laced with an unsettling undertone. Serena's intuition heightened as she detected a strange undercurrent in her mother's words. Mom, do you know something? She inquired cautiously. It was unusual for her mother to display any interest in her personal affairs, considering her usual disengagement. The sudden openness about these matters raised suspicions in Serena's mind. Her mother's gaze wavered slightly, causing Serena's unease to deepen. It seemed as though her mother held a deeper understanding of the situation, particularly concerning her agreement with Mark. Know what? She retorted. Do you know why I married Mark? Serena asked and felt guilty as she met her mother's gaze. She hadn't reached out to her since getting married. Apart from the last time she had visited, she had avoided any contact. The way her mother suddenly brought up the issue of having a child, and Mark's newfound concern for her, Serena couldn't help but suspect that she had some knowledge regarding the same. Of course, you and Mark got married because you were in love with each other, Mrs. Jenner replied. It's not as simple as that. Mom, you clearly know something. Do you know that we still haven't obtained a marriage certificate? Serena confessed. Serena was not a fool. The photocopy of the marriage certificate had her parents' signatures as proof. If it was real, then that meant they were aware of it. Mom, you knew long ago that I didn't marry Mark for real, didn't you? Serena was even more certain of this from her expression. What are you talking about? It was you who wanted to get married. I didn't force you. Her mother snapped and did not attempt to hide it anymore. Serena was taken aback by her mother's early awareness of her situation. She had been worried that her decision to marry Mark would seem baseless to her parents, causing them unnecessary heartache. She had expected them to advise her against treating marriage as a mere game. She had considered their feelings and believed they were oblivious to the truth. Little did she know that they had been aware of everything from the start. They knowingly pushed her into a precarious situation akin to throwing her into a fire pit. I chose to marry him, but do you even know why? I did it for the sake of the Jenner family, Serena shrieked, her frustration and pain palpable. During that time, the Jenner family was already facing immense difficulties, and Serena had agreed to meet Mark. Before agreeing, Mark had given her family $20 million. We have taken care of you for so many years, and now that the family is in trouble, shouldn't you contribute something to them? Moreover, marrying into the Barclay family is a stroke of luck for you. Don't act like you're being wronged, Mrs. Jenner stated, showing no remorse. Serena had pondered the reasons before. The Barclay family was a prominent and affluent family. The Jenner family had always favored Gwen. Why didn't they let Gwen marry Mark? Now she understood. Her mother had been aware all along that marrying Mark was a nameless transaction. Serena was merely a pawn destined to spend her life like that under the pretense of happiness. How could they bear to subject Gwen to such a bitter fate? No wonder Gwen had cried and insisted on marrying Mark back then. She had faced strong opposition from both her parents. They had not approved of the match. Suddenly, Serena realized the absurdity of her actions. She had been willing to sacrifice a lifetime of happiness for the sake of the Jenner family. Yet the family showed no gratitude. Instead, they treated it as if it were expected of her. Mom, as a daughter of the Jenner family, it's my duty to contribute to the family, even if it means that I might have to sacrifice my happiness. If marrying Mark is truly as wonderful as you claim, then why didn't you let Gwen marry him? She seems very keen on being with Mark. You've showered her with love and given her everything since she was young. So why deny this happiness to her? Serena gritted, trying to hold back her tears. Why does this burden fall on me? Why can't you give me an answer? She confronted her mother, her voice filled with confusion and frustration. Mrs. Jenner's anger flared, her eyes widening. What kind of tone is that? Your sister is still young. If anyone should get married, it should be you. Serena took a deep breath. Okay, let's agree that I am older, and I should be the one to marry first. What I find strange is that the Barclay family didn't arrange a grand wedding ceremony or make the marriage public. You, who have always been so high-profile, how did you actually tolerate this? 
Mom, am I truly your daughter? Serena asked, her words laced with a mix of disbelief and hurt. Serena was devastated. How could she not see it? Her parents had known all along that the marriage was fake. So, it seems that you both did know that Mark didn't really want to marry me. You all pushed me into a pit of fire for $30 million, she roared. She went on expressing her feelings. Throughout my childhood, none of you have ever really paid attention to me. Even if you don't love me as much as you love Gwen, can you at least empathize with my pain a little bit? Serena had come to the realization that her initial encounter with Mark had been orchestrated by the Jenner family as part of a scheme. Leo was right. She was a big fool. She did not know that she had been sold. The Jenner family couldn't be trusted. Serena knew deep down that her instincts were right. She had always been able to rely on herself, but now she realized she couldn't trust anyone in her family. I provided for you, clothed you, and raised you. Isn't that enough for you, Serena? You're incredibly ungrateful, her mother snapped. But Serena's heart shattered as her eyes turned red. These people were supposed to be her family, her parents, the ones she had cherished since childhood. So I was just a means to an end from the beginning. You never truly saw me as your daughter. Serena choked on her words, her heartache unbearable. If she hadn't seen her mother's true face now, she would have lived in ignorance for the rest of her life. Anyway, you're now Mrs. Barclay. You are already married to Mark, and now it is official too. You are a rightful member of the Barclay family. Any other woman would kill to be in your position. You should be thankful for all this. Take care of yourself and give birth to a healthy child for Mark. Don't think about anything else. Mrs. Jenner grumbled and angrily stormed out of the room, leaving Serena to cope with her pain on her own. Serena couldn't help but question the notion of family love she had held on to for so long. Her own mother, the one who had brought her into this world and raised her, paled in comparison to Lillian, someone she had only recently met. Are you leaving just like that? Lillian's voice came from the living room. Stay for lunch. No, I have some things to take care of. I trust you to look after Serena, replied Mrs. Jenner. Of course, we'll take good care of her, Lillian assured her and walked in with a plate of freshly cut fruit. Serena, come and have some fruit. Why are you crying? Did your mother say something to upset you? She asked, concern lacing her voice. Serena desperately tried to hold back her tears, but they streamed down her face. She couldn't comprehend what she had done to warrant such treatment. Unbeknownst to her, her own mother had orchestrated the situation. Her mind went blank, and Lillian swiftly set the fruit aside to embrace her. Serena, please don't cry. It's not good for your health. Mom, Serena called out repeatedly, her voice filled with desperation. Why didn't her mother care about her? Lillian proved to be a far more caring figure than her own mother. At that moment, Mark appeared at the door, urging Lillian to step outside. Mom, please give us some privacy. I'll look after Serena. Reluctantly, Lillian released Serena from her embrace and warned Mark, Make sure to be kind. Don't mistreat Serena. I won't forgive you if you do. Understood, Mom. Mark replied as he escorted Lillian out and locked the door behind her. As he witnessed the girl's tears streaming down her face, Mark finally understood the depth of Serena's pain. It tugged at his heartstrings. Serena, please don't cry, he gently uttered extending his hand to touch her tears. With a fierce gaze, Serena locked eyes with him. Mark, my parents were aware of our relationship, weren't they? She demanded. Mark knew that she would eventually piece together the truth regarding the marriage. He had chosen not to hide anything anymore. Yes, they knew. That's why I despise the Jenner family, he responded honestly. Serena questioned, What's the difference between their behavior and the ones who sell their daughters? In the beginning, I was distant and cold because I thought you were after my money, just like the others, Mark revealed, his voice tinged with regret. Serena finally grasped the full truth, but the weight of reality felt unbearable. It was a cruel realization. Mark spoke carefully. Serena, I never wanted to deceive you. Initially, I was drawn to Haley and intentionally kept my distance from you. But as time went on, 
I saw how different you were from them. You possess purity and kindness that captured my heart, bit by bit. Serena, you may not realize just how captivating you are. Even knowing that you are already in a relationship with someone else, I still desire to be with you. I can look past your history with Leo. All I want is for you to have a good life with me in the future. I will make it up to you with a proper wedding. I'll proudly announce to everyone that we are married. His confession was earnest and his charisma undeniable. Yet Serena's heart was already committed to someone else. Mark, I cannot marry you. The only person I love is Leo, Serena asserted firmly. Mark tried to convince her. Don't be so certain. Love can evolve and change. In the past, I thought I had strong feelings for Haley, but after you entered my life, I realized what true love truly means. Serena, you are different from Haley. The connection I feel with you is something I've never experienced with her before. I admit that I made mistakes in the past and neglected your feelings. But from this moment forward, I promise to make amends. I will treat you well. Can you please give me a chance? Mark's words seemed sincere. That's impossible, Mark. I don't trust you anymore. You knew about my parents from the very beginning. Why didn't you tell me? Serena asked coldly. She felt like a fool, unaware that everyone else knew the truth, while she desperately tried to keep up the charade. She felt like a clown. Mark tenderly wiped the tears from the corner of Serena's eyes. Serena, have you forgotten? It was you who asked me not to bring up this matter. Serena was rendered speechless. At that moment, she had no idea that the Jenner family was already aware of the truth. She had even pleaded with Mark to cooperate and keep it a secret from them. Mark, there's only one thing I need to ask you. Did my parents ever hesitate or express reluctance about me marrying you? She questioned. No, they didn't. If they truly cared about you, I wouldn't despise the Jenner family as much as I do. From beginning to end, they only cared about money. They never showed any concern for your well-being, Mark replied honestly. Serena closed her eyes, tears streaming down her cheeks again. It became painfully clear that she was merely a pawn in the hands of the Jenner family. Understanding the anguish in her heart, Mark tried to reach out and embrace Serena, but she sternly commanded, Don't touch me. She didn't need anyone's pity, especially not from Mark, the one who caused all of this. Serena, I understand that you're feeling hurt right now. Please give me some time. I will treat you well, Mark pleaded. Mr. Barkley, please leave. I want to be alone for a while, Serena croaked. She was exhausted with all the pain she felt, emotionally and physically. Mark wanted to say something, but he held back. Serena refused to listen to him and harbored deep resentment, so he remained silent. Once the door was closed... Serena found herself alone in the room. She contemplated what she had done wrong. Why didn't her family like her? Even though the warm sunlight bathed her body, she couldn't sense its warmth. Instead, a chilling sensation consumed her entire being. Leo, I only have you, she whispered into nothingness. Lillian returned to the room with Mark later. It was dinner time, and Serena lay on the bed, her face pale. In a gentle tone, Mark offered, Serena, would you like to join us for dinner, or should I bring the food here? Serena cast him a cold gaze and replied, I don't want to eat. Serena, your body is recovering from a major injury and it's important to take care of yourself. You must eat something. If you don't want to get up, I'll bring it over, Mark announced. And after a few minutes, he proceeded to bring food for Serena. Serena, let me feed you, he offered. Mark, I said I don't want to eat. Don't you understand English? Serena snapped and was furious with him. Ever since Mark forcibly took her away from Leo, Serena couldn't bear to even look at him anymore. She couldn't comprehend why he had suddenly changed like this. Mark shrugged and said, Serena, you weren't like this before. Do you truly hate me that much? I don't understand. How am I any worse than Leo? According to Mark, Leo was involved in some small-scale business and didn't have much prominence. Otherwise, he would have been well-known throughout the country. In terms of social status, Mark was the legitimate eldest grandson of the Barclay family, while Leo was considered Edmund's illegitimate son. Serena pleaded, Mark, if you let me go back to Leo, then I won't hate you. 
Leo is the best thing that ever happened to me, at least he's devoted to me. You initially claimed to love Haley, but now you say you like me and want to separate me from Leo. Mark, do your actions truly align with the love you have for Haley who has been by your side for so many years? Or are you simply using me as a means to seek revenge against Leo? Although the details of what had transpired within the Barclay family were unclear, it was evident that Leo and Mark were enemies from the start. Otherwise, Leo wouldn't hold such deep animosity toward the Barclay family, and his mere existence wouldn't be a thorn in Mark's side. During their previous encounters with the Barclay family, Edmund Barclay, Mark's grandfather, had always displayed great affection for Leo. Perhaps Mark was afraid that Leo would undermine his wealth and possessions. Serena, why can't you believe that I genuinely care for you? Mark sighed helplessly. Mark, you have loved Haley for so many years, yet you discarded her like an old tissue. How long have we been together? How can you prove that you truly care for me? Serena snapped. She found it ironic. Could he simply claim to care for anyone? Mark questioned her. Well, you and Leo haven't been together for long either. How can you prove that he genuinely cares for you? Serena replied with a spark in her eyes. Because I can feel it in my heart that he truly cares for me. And I want to marry him. Mark chuckled. As adorable as it sounds, you should give up this thought as soon as you can. It's impossible for you to be with him for the rest of your life. He grumbled and scooped up a spoonful of soup. Come on, open your mouth and eat like a good girl. Serena forcefully pushed the bowl out of his hand, causing the soup to spill onto the floor. Mark's eyes burned with anger. In the past, Serena would never have dared to do such a thing. Mark, I said I won't eat. I'm asking you to leave. I don't want to see you. Serena growled, enunciating each word clearly. Mark adjusted his glasses frames and looked at Serena with a serious gaze. She had changed, and her eyes reflected that change. I'll have someone bring it again, he said. No need. No matter how many times you come, I won't eat unless you let me go. Serena roared and was persistent. Mark's anger was now building. That's impossible. I won't let you go, Serena. Don't make me resort to other methods to make you eat. He clenched his fists. Mark swiftly arranged for another bowl of soup. Serena, I remember you used to enjoy this soup, he commented. Serena didn't even want to look at him, let alone eat. Mark placed the soup on the side. Are you sure you don't want to eat? He questioned. No, she replied with a stern voice. Fine, then don't blame me. Mark growled and suddenly leaned closer. Serena tensed up. What are you doing? She shrieked and stopped Mark from getting any closer. Mark effortlessly grabbed her hand. What do you think a man would do to his woman? I want to kiss you, Serena. And if you don't eat, I'll keep kissing you until you do. His grip tightened on her wrist. It turned out that Mark was stronger than he looked. Serena furrowed her brows. Mark, let go of me, she yelled. Then will you eat or not? Mark insisted. Serena finally gave in. I'll eat. Just let go of me. Good girl. Mark released his grip and carefully fed Serena. His eyes overflowed with an obsession for her. The phone began to ring. It was Mark's. Serena had heard this ringtone several times before. She looked at Mark, and Mark nonchalantly answered the call. Hello, Haley? Haley spoke sweetly from the other end. Marky, let's have dinner together. I've already made a reservation. I have something to take care of tonight. You can go ahead and enjoy the dinner yourself. Maybe invite a few friends. Mark's expression remained unchanged. All right, then. Will you come over later? Haley asked and didn't care much. No, take care of yourself. Rest well, Mark grumbled and hung up the phone. Serena then spoke up. Mark, don't you think this is amusing? You want to be with me while keeping Haley on the side. Don't you think you're asking for too much? Mark spoke in a businesslike manner. Serena, the situation between Haley and me is quite complicated. I've already realized that I don't have feelings for her anymore. Give me some time and I'll handle it. The main reason Mark hesitated between Serena and Haley was that he still didn't want to let go of Haley. He liked how she worshipped him and put him on a pedestal. However, Leo's arrival had completely unsettled him. He now had to speed things up. He would have to act fast. Mark would have to come up with a plan to leave Haley without any trouble from her end. Wasn't she quite fond of money? 
he would offer Haley a substantial sum of money. Serena tugged at Mark's sleeve. Mark, I am begging you. You can continue your relationship with Haley. It's clear that you like her, so why are you holding on to me and not letting go? We can still pretend as we did in the past. Just let me go back to Leo, she croaked. Mark reached out and gently caressed Serena's cheek. Serena, you're truly too innocent. No wonder even Leo is drawn to you. You're like a blank canvas that can be easily influenced. But you must understand that being so innocent can sometimes be foolish. Do you really think we can go back to how things were? We can't turn back time. Why can't we go back? If you let me go, I promise to keep everything that happened today a secret. I won't tell Haley, Serena pleaded. Mark sighed and continued stroking Serena's cheek. Serena, you are truly naive. I said that the person I like is you, not Haley. Don't entertain such naive thoughts. Just eat and be a good girl. If there's anything you require from now on, just let me know. You're weak and you need to take care of your health. His voice was full of concern, unlike his attitude. Serena angrily pushed his hand away. Mark, if you don't let me go, you'll regret it. Leo won't let you get away with this, she warned. I want to see what he can do to stop me, Mark retorted. He stood up and walked away, saying, I'll come back for the bowl later. If you don't finish it, I'll really kiss you. Mark, you jerk, Serena screamed at him. The door closed, leaving Mark standing outside with mixed emotions. He couldn't help but question himself. How did things end up like this? Everything was a mess, a complete mess. But deep down, he knew that now that he took this step, there would be no turning back. Serena didn't have a phone within reach. At this moment, all she wanted was to hear Leo's voice. She stared blankly at the darkening sky, mirroring the darkness that consumed her mood. When would all this come to an end? Things had spiraled out of control. She was now legally married to Mark. Mark's unwavering attitude made it clear that he would never let go. As long as they remained married, Serena and Leo could never be together openly. Leo, you probably didn't expect things to turn out like this, she muttered under her breath. What should she do? Serena furrowed her brow in deep thought. Late at night, Mark entered her room with a tired expression. Why are you here again? Serena questioned, still angry. Mark replied casually, to sleep. Serena widened her eyes and said, your mother isn't in the villa. You don't have to put on an act. There are plenty of guest rooms here. Serena, it seems like you haven't fully embraced your new status. You're my lawful wife now, so there's no need to pretend anymore. Mark smirked at her. Serena's face was filled with disgust. Are you suggesting that you want to sleep with me? She growled. That's right. But don't worry, not tonight. Your wounds haven't healed yet. I'm not that desperate, Mark replied, unbuttoning his shirt. Serena quickly threw off her blanket and got up from the bed. Mark stopped her and said, If you dare to leave this room, I can't guarantee that I won't touch you. Besides, the family doctor is here. If anything happens, there will be someone to attend to it immediately. Serena was seething with anger. Mark, why didn't I realize earlier that you're such a despicable person? 